a better place than Morocco for an incredibly diverse range of dishes produced by a culture steeped in history from tagines to keftas and bastia. So join me as I experience new flavors that spark my imagination for fantastic tasting Moroccan meals. This is heaven. My culinary adventure has brought me to a small town tucked beneath the Middle Atlas Mountains on the edge of the Sahara Desert called A Wazim. This place feels very much like a gateway between two different worlds. Over there you have the town where people live more or less how they live all over Morocco, bustling local souks and markets. But over there, you have the desert, and that's a very different story. Later, I'll be trekking deep into the Sahara Desert to cook some mouth-watering stuffed peppers for a nomadic family. This is almost done! But first, Awazin is home to the Berber-speaking Aata tribe, traditionally nomadic and thought to be the original inhabitants of Morocco. Because this community have not completely severed their links with their nomadic past, you will find that they are still completely in tune with Mother Nature. So I'm traveling out of town to learn more about this tribe's taste for self-sufficiency and inventive cooking. It's Sunday lunchtime, and if you're a semi-nomadic Berber family, what better place for a picnic? Every member of the family has its own job to do, and one of the men of this Ayata tribe family, English-speaking Hussein, is going to fill me in on the details. What's happening? Firstly, Maryam and Tloho do make into bread. They're waiting for Fatima to mix the kind of spices, eight spices or nine spices. Wow. And then she mixed with olive oil. Aisha, yes. her job is just to make the rocks hot. Kind of bread they're making is burfan, a special nomadic Berber bread which is stuffed. This dough is just unbelievable. It's silky, it's elastic. The paste has got chili in it. It's got some coriander, basil, and, and a bit of beef fat, which is gonna keep this bread lovely and moist. Oh, that smells absolutely delicious. The bread is then rolled in on itself to seal the filling inside. That is amazing, it's like a big Berber dumpling. The bread's gonna get lifted and it's gonna go onto those glowing coals. Woo! The oven is now being sealed. The ladies are now building a fire on top of it, and I'm sure that very soon we're gonna get a beautifully baked bread coming out of these coals. The Berber bread will take around 45 minutes to bake, enough time for a cup of mint tea and 40 winks. That sounds done to me. Once the bread has been thoroughly cleaned, it's time to serve it up to the family. This is a real boar fan. Mm -hmm. yeah, you will like it. Mm -hmm. It's hot. It's hot because it's spicy. It has the, the pepper. Ah. Yes. The dried ground chilies in here is absolutely unbelievable. It tastes like a steak sandwich, actually, from the beef fat. I love it. Thank you. What an incredible way to share a Sunday lunch with your family. I'm now heading off back into the town of Awazin to repay the favor with a special dish of my own. I'm in Hussein's family's garden. I'm going to be cooking.